So thank you very, very much. It is my immense pleasure to be the first speaker of the first Q2B in Japan. And I'm here partly because I have been working on quantum computing for 24 years, probably longer than most of you. But at the same time, at Keio University, uh, we actually started Quantum Computing Center four years ago. And we became the first IBM Quantum Hub. And we've been pushing the frontier of quantum software algorithm. And you'll be hearing a lot from Keio University tomorrow. And also, uh, we are working closely together with eight companies. So we're very proud to be pushing the business frontier of the quantum computing. So I'm here today not to tell you about what we do at Keio University, but here I'm talking about quantum strategies in Japan. So I switched to Japanese because I've been requested to speak in Japanese. So today's slides, they're made by the cabinet office. So I have not touched any of these uh, slides. These are the official slides of the Japanese government. So quantum innovation strategy of uh, Japan, vision of quantum future society is what I'll be talking about today. So I'm going to talk about the vision of quantum future society, which was announced in April. So quantum technology in Japan, what kind of future is it going to create, is what I'll be explaining. And I'll be talking about the three basic concepts of this vision. And then I'll be talking about the, what kind of a future society uh, will be created. And I'll talk about the fundamental efforts in Japan to create innovation. So vision of quantum future society. Actually. Two years ago, in 2020, we established uh, the Quantum Technology and Innovation Strategy in Japan at the Cabinet Office, uh, and that was uh, uh, officially approved by the government. So that was an official uh, strategy. And so quantum computing and quantum communication and quantum sensing in these three areas, there will be initiatives and how that will be developed into business and how to have, how to increase uh, quantum uh, native uh, personnel. That was explained in that strategy. And uh, in the two years, there's been phenomenal uh, acceleration in development of uh, quantum technology in the world, m much more accelerated than expected two years ago. As a result of that acceleration, the original strategy, uh, we decided it needs to be further accelerated. So. There was a review working group that was established, to, and uh, I was uh, uh, appointed the chair. And from October last year to March this year, we had 14 meetings in this uh, uh, review committee. Uh, this was comprised of uh, quantum experts. And during this time, what changed? Well, uh, the uh, economic security situation changed. And also, actually, two years ago, carbon neutrality, carbon zero. Well, two years ago, that was not still a popular term. But uh, zero carbon, carbon neutrality, something that we talk about all the time. Two years ago, it was not so. So there's been change in the environment. And so we shifted from this blue, where we had the quantum technology and innovation strategy that was established two years ago. This was revised uh, and renewed. Uh, to the vision of quantum uh, future societies. Actually, they coexist, so they're like uh, the uh, two wheels on an axis. And uh, business development around the quantum is being accelerated with uh, these uh, two initiatives. So what has changed greatly in the past two years? You see it on the bottom of the slide. So there's uh, been change in the international competition uh, for quantum technology. And uh, there's been rapid development of DX under COVID and carbon neutral society. There's a need to contribute to such a society. And uh, the fundamental technologies for uh, quantum uh, technology that has developed substantially. And uh, there is uh, a a more uh, expectation uh, uh, for uh, economic security. And uh, in terms of benchmark, you see. Google, IonQ, and Japan. So 
I've been uh, in close uh, uh, con uh, partnership with IBM, so I'll talk about it briefly, and I'm sure it will be explained in detail later by IBM, and I'll explain how things have changed. And uh, these three basic uh, concepts of this vision, it's quite important. So we're trying to incorporate the quantum technology into the overall socioeconomic system. So that's the uh, crux of this. So quantum sen uh, computing, sen uh, sensing, and communication. People tend to stay I in the realm of uh, quantum, but you, you can't do anything just b with quantum. It has to be you, uh, com combined with the computing classical computing technologies used in the economic system, and also 5G, beyond G, 6G, these kinds of telecom technologies and encryption technologies and sensing. Well, there's going to be a lot of uh, wearable sensors uh, coming in, so sensing technologies. All of these uh, technologies, these are classical technologies, and uh, what can't be done uh, or difficult to do with uh, classical technologies, gradually we're trying to accelerate with quantum. That is the basic fundamental idea. Uh, so the, uh, we're, we're going to utilize the cutting edge uh, uh, quantum technology. So we're going to provide a, a test bed, and that's going to lead to new startup companies and industries. So IBM's most uh, recent quantum 2022 update uh, development uh, roadmap. It's an 18 minute video on YouTube. If you watch this, you can see that uh, ha combining uh, with the classical computing uh, is important. For example, supercomputers based on CPU, based on Moore's law. So with the development of the CPU, supercomputer developed. And now that's been combined with AI. So it's not just CPU. So GPU has also been used. And then quantum uh, is going to be added. So CPU, GPU, and then quantum centric super computer is going to develop is what is being explained in this roadmap so needless to say we tend to focus on the chip uh, inside the quantum computer but uh, you have the control system the language and of course, compiler. All these stacks have to be in place. And furthermore, even if you just look only at the chip, if uh, the strategy of just having more qubits in a chip, that's not going to be enough. So IBM is looking at this uh, technique uh, of uh, uh, placing uh, chips in close proximity so that they're connected uh, quantumly so that's been proposed. And then there's the long, the, then for the long distance between the chips, maybe not perfect, doesn't have to be so fast, but uh, connect them uh, quantitate, uh, uh, quantumly. And so that path is also provided so that kind of distributed uh, chip architecture can be realized uh, for scaling to increase qubits and uh, increase the performance of each qubit and improve coherence. And what we've been talking about for some time, the clock speed also is very important. We have to raise the clock speed. All of these have to be pursued under the roadmap. And around here, there is the dynamic control. So if it becomes dynamic around here, especially here, how to connect with the uh, conventional classical computer is going to be key and so strategy is uh, indicated for that and uh, so this was just announced recently and uh, since last october we have been compiling this strategy and uh, it was clear to us as well that uh, this kind of direction is necessary so uh, three basic concepts about the vision uh, i explained earlier so uh, first basic concept so uh, we want to incorporate quantum technology into the overall so socioeconomic system and integrating with uh, classical technology systems uh, in hybrids to create industrial growth opportunities and solving social issues. That's the major basic concept. And uh, 
if you go to the cabinet office website, uh, you'll be able to download this. It's easier than to take a photo. So download it, please. And uh, so there should be uh, software, computer, uh, cryptography, metrology, and sensing. And uh, so there needs to be startup and uh, AI and the classical computing uh, is necessary as well. And uh, also, you need to be able to utilize these technologies. You don't just want to make uh, quantum computers. You want to advance computing. You want to advance communication and sensing. That is the goal. And so what to put together for that goal? Well, quantum is going to play a major role uh, in that endeavor. So quantum engineers have to always uh, talk with uh, classical technology engineers so that the overall computing, uh, communications, and sensing performance is enhanced. So that will lead uh, to uh, economic growth and uh, a sustained uh, harmony between people and the environment and a spiritually enriched lifestyle and well-being. So the vision of future society. I think I've explained it to the full extent. So let's uh, jump to the concrete policies. But uh, just to recap uh, what I just explained, so you see the uh, expected or assumed scenarios. So uh, the uh, there's uh, 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 depopulation, and uh, there's the DX society 5.0. There's a 46% reduction target, and uh, quantum computing can save a lot of energy. So, how to use that for harmony between people and the environment, economic growth, and the spiritually enriched lifestyles? So, in terms of quantum centric, well, you see the uh, quantum in the center, but doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's a technology for quantum, but actually the uh, consumer service, uh, uh, medical and drug discovery, material and chemistry, uh, and the logistics factory, mobility, safety, and security, energy, for all these uh, sectors, uh, it's important that the quantum contributes to each of these sectors. And that's why quantum is placed in the center. That is the intent of placing quantum in the middle of this diagram. Well, as I'm requested uh, to cr draw various uh, diagrams from different perspectives. That's what uh, we do. So uh, supercomputers and other computers need to be connected to the quantum computers. It could be on-premise, or it could be embedded in the cloud. And the communication uh, between that it could be 5G, beyond 5G, uh, or quantum communication. and. Uh, uh, also, there uh, uh, is a standardization uh, of uh, the Lattice uh, system ba led by IBM for the uh, encryption. So there was that news announced recently. And uh, so from uh, that kind of cryptography, there will be uh, the quantum security network uh, and also quantum metrology and the sensing that will all be connected and that will be networked. And so you see on the far left, you will see the advancement of computing and advancement of communication and security in the middle and advancement of measurement and sensing on the right. So this would uh, include medical diagnostic uh, equipment, uh, MRI, that uh, uses quantum technology. So all of these sensing technologies should be developed. So together uh, with the QSTAR, we have uh, debated this, and this is an output of that. So 10 million quantum technology users in Japan, that's what we aim for. So about if you have a tenth of the population using it, then uh, it will uh, have a life of its own uh, to, to continue to grow. So by 2030, we want 10 million users. And the production by quantum technology, we want to increase to 50 trillion, not just quantum computers, but uh, uh, by quantum being engaged in some way, uh, we want to create the 50 trillion enhancement to production. And needless to say, we need quantum-based uh, uh, unicorns that opens future uh, markets. So
the currencies, if it becomes a unicorn, we will be so happy. And uh, we would like to have the second and uh, third uh, Knesset. And uh, like to uh, talk about the content. There's no Q&A today, correct? So uh, it says 4 minutes 39 seconds. I have that much amount of time to speak, correct? OK, thank you. So we have the quantum computer software, quantum security, metrology, and sensing. So. What's written in blue is where we did the revision with this uh, vision of future society. So what's emphasized there, as I said many times, is uh, to have the hybrid with and to assist the uh, current uh, classical systems. So the quantum and the classical sh uh, should be connected with algorithm, software interface, and security network sensing. And so within sensing, uh, well, quantum computer is the same, but also material development and uh, supply, that kind of quantum uh, material needs to be uh, addressed, and so that's included here. And as a national project, we will be strengthening all of these. And at the bottom, well, actually, what was written two years ago is repeated, uh, but there's more specificity uh, in orange, uh, one through seven. Uh, we're trying to have a startup creation and revitalization, many policies under that, and then uh, strengthening quantum technology innovation centers. So already in Japan, around Riken, there are these uh, centers that have been developed and uh, at AIST, AIST, uh, there is, uh, and also QST, uh, Tohoku University, and uh, OIST, Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology, and uh, uh, Riken as headquarter. They sh all should be uh, strengthened. Also, there's Osaka University and uh, other places. There are already centers for quantum technologies. So these new centers, uh, as listed here, are going to be developed. And uh, in terms of uh, developing and securing human resources, I am the pro program director of QDIP, uh, a Japanese program where we focus on HRD. And in QDIP, uh, Yasunobu Nakamura, uh, who was mentioned earlier, uh, uh, leading uh, the uh, uh, hardware development as a flagship uh, project and Osaka University, Dr. Fuji is working on the AI-centric software uh, development uh, as a flagship quantum project. And also Atom, using a group of atoms, quantum simulation is also being worked on. So those are the projects that are taking place. And also we should uh, uh, have uh, in IP and standardization international collaboration, outreach, and economic security. So overall, Kitagawa-san uh, is leading this uh, moonshot uh, project, and uh, that uh, is going to expand the frontier of uh, quantum in the national project. So uh, moonshot and the QDIP, which I serve as director, and uh, within the also in, in other economic security frameworks, there's going to be budget for uh, quantum projects, and all of that together should lead to the development of society. And for that, the uh, hybrid uh, between quantum uh, and the classical is going to be necessary. That is what we're going to aim for. That's the vision and strategy of Japan. That is all for myself. Thank you very much.